So we were once referred to as the most happy peop happiest people on the planet and that is because uh, no matter what happens to us we tend to smile you know in the face of poverty and the face of societal pressure no matter what happens no matter the challenge we are you know experiencing at that particular point in time we tend to smile but fast forward today the world health organization is saying that we are one of the most depressed in fact the most depressed people in africa now you wonder how did we get to this point because you know these days you see a lot of people telling you that uh, they are depressed and it doesn't stop there people are committing suicide now according to the world health organization that uh, you know uh, one person in every 40 seconds you know takes their own life and nigerians are part of you know this number and sometimes you know people will tell you that the depression is not really an african issue it's not a nigerian problem it's not a black man's disease it's for the white men but why are people committing suicide of course on the show today we are going to be looking at the rising cases of depression and suicide in nigeria thank you for joining us. My name is Suleiman Babajia Usman. It's always a pleasure. All right, thank you for staying with us. And if you just join us uh, today, we're going to be looking at mental health in Nigeria. And, you know, in this part of the world, whenever mental health is referenced, you know, a lot of people tend to think uh, it's to do with madness and all of that. And that is why some people who are depressed don't even seek for help. But uh, today we are going to dissect that. But right now, let's take this background report to put together by Ayuba Tete. It is a silent killer that disguises itself in different forms. It comes as that inexplicable fit of anger or moodiness, or as that overwhelming sense of hopelessness that gradually and completely engulfs you. Worst yet, it comes as that persistent voice in your head telling you that life is not worth living. This silent killer is depression. So when we talk about clinical depression, clinical depression is more severe and it could form, it could fall into either mild, moderate or very severe cases of depression. So when you talk about um, momentary um, depression, this could be as a result of an incident, an occurrence or something that just happened to you and then it just flashes by and then you, you get out of it immediately. So the major difference is, has to do with severity and then the duration it lasts. In recent times, depression leading to self-harm and suicide has been on a rise. There have been many reports of people jumping off bridges, buildings, or ingesting poison to end their suffering. What could be the reason for people taking such drastic measures? When we talk about recent times, we're looking at a period of in the last 5 to 10 years. And um, depression generally can be broadly, causes can broadly be categorized as either biological um, psychological or um, social and then um, if you look at our society you find that the most recent um, cases of depression as as a result of um, psychological um, issues and so we could um, um, term this as a continuous um, or continuing suffering among the people that lead to depression and when we say continuing suffering we're talking about um, issues such as um, um, being in an abusive or uncaring relationship being lonely loneliness is a major cause um, sexual abuse, um, long unemployment. You can see a lot of the youth are unemployed, and when they stay this, when they stay unemployed for a long period of time, this could um, lead to depressive states, and then of course they will fall into um, what we call a clinical depression. 
Despite Nigeria being ranked 15th in the world in the frequency of suicide cases, the immediate society seems to lack empathy as onlookers would opt to take out their phones to record a suicide attempt rather than help out or pay attention to symptoms in people going through depression or on the verge of suicide. Also is the obvious dearth in professional help for people going through mental health challenges. It's it's, it's a bit um, a challenging one because even um, normal child health illnesses, we don't have enough medical personnel to attend to such. So when we begin to talk about specialists, then you know Nigeria is in a very, very um, big trouble because um, we don't have enough specialists to handle special cases and mental health is a special field in medicine. So at the moment, I don't think um, we are doing enough. Uh, we can do much more and then uh, we need to do a lot of um, sensitization we need to talk to people to be able to appreciate um, people who are suffering from mental illnesses of which um, depression is one of them when we talk about psychosocial support this has to do with um, showing empathy showing love trying to encourage those who are having such issues to reassure them that um, their cases are not as a result of um, their own um, faults we need to stop blame blame game. We need to give them hope that um, whatever is happening to them is a face and um, they will get out of it. So it's very important that we give them um, as much um, psychosocial support as possible to people who are suffering from depression. Weekend Deal today will shine its spotlight on the issues of mental health in Nigeria. To advance this conversation, we have joined us in the studio, Dr. Ephraim uh, Oluanuga. He's the Chief Consultant uh, Psychiatrist, National Hospital, Abuja. All right. Good morning, Ma. You're welcome to our studios. Good morning. Thank you. All right. You have been following some of our reports so far. When we say mental health in Nigeria depression rising cases of you know suicide in nigeria what comes to your mind because i mean at some point we were referred to as the most happiest people you know in the world today world health organization is saying that we are one of the most depressed you know people in the world well um i think that um let's start by saying that um the original data that said we were the happiest people in the world, um, we're not quite sure how that data was obtained. Because, you know, the average Nigerian, if you just say to them, are you happy? Of course, they're going to tell you very happy, even though they're suffering. But again, that was uh, years ago. I think now people are more um, conversant with even issues of mental health um social media is there uh, people are also uh, frustrated so you find that probably fewer people far fewer people now will just give an automatic answer to say that uh, they are happy and um so but um having said that um being happy or not being happy on the street is not the measure of depression depression oh. is not a street matter depression is a clinical diagnosis there there are criteria that we will find before we can classify a person as depressed okay. you know so um, i know that 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 word depression has become almost um overused now everybody says, oh, i'm depressed so oh, this matter is depressing me but actually when we're talking about depression as as an illness as a matter for you know, medical concern. We're talking about a person feeling unhappy most of the mm -hmm. time, most days of the week, for at least the past two weeks. Mm -hmm. The person not having interest in the things that they used to have interest in doing. Okay. So you find a, a, a woman is not cooking for the family or the man is not interested in his job anymore. Or in, he used to watch football, he doesn't watch anymore. And finally, also a lack of energy. You find the person is depressed, they just don't have energy to do things. So to, to even get up in the morning to face life is a difficulty. 
and it's, the feeling is worse in the money. When all of these things are happening, and they're happening in the absence of a person having been bereaved recently, uh, um, and they're happening in the absence of somebody being under the influence of some drugs or the okay. other, then we have to think of depression. Hmm. So, although it's really very good that people are talking about depression on the streets, okay. um, we need to be careful not to slap that term um, depression on everything. Yeah, but because the advantage yeah. of talking about it is that it brings up awareness. At least people okay. are thinking, could I be depressed? And they go to get checked up. Well, it's good that, you know, people are really talking about it, but there are, you know, some people who feel that uh, whenever, because depression is also part of mental health generally, and then when you mention depression, mental health, they tend to look at it from this negative, you know, angle to say that, uh, well, I'm not mad, but depression is not a result of madness. Talk to me further about that. Right, so um, the fact is that depression is one type of mental illness, one type of mental health condition. There are several mental health conditions. Okay, can you, you know, expatiate on that? So, for example, what people tend to have in mind when they're saying uh, people are, you know, mentally ill, they're using derogatory terms which I will not even use you know they're talking about psychotic conditions those are conditions where people lose touch with reality people's behavior is grossly altered their thinking is grossly altered the way they relate to people is affected and you know inappropriate that is easily noticeable mm -hmm. to people but depression is a mood disorder Mm. The key thing about depression is the mood. So when a person is depressed, when we are aware that that person's mood is affected. Now, it, it doesn't stop with the mood. So a person could be depressed and not sleep well or mm. be sleeping too much and not eat well or be eating too much. Like I said earlier, lack of energy will be there, lack of interest will be there. But mm. the key thing is the mood the mood is low mm -hmm. having said that i'll give a caveat sometimes particularly in men that low mood they, they may not notice that they're feeling unhappy what they just notice is that they're feeling irritable mm -hmm. they you know they just they just get angry little things just irritate them so sometimes the mood is not always just unhappy it could be irritable well, now you say some, some little things just, uh, you know, irritate them, right? And I know at some point, I know I feel that sometimes it's not maybe if I go home and something little happen, I just find myself, you know, and then after a while, you realize that you shouldn't have reacted the way you did. Mm -hmm. Is that some level of a symptom? So again, when we're talking about an illness, it's a prevailing circumstance. Okay. It's, um, you see, the, the, there is a difference between somebody just did something and we all get irritated, we all feel sad, we, we had some bad news, we just feel low, but, you know, it goes away. Somebody could be feeling low now, just had some bad news, you know, but then good news comes and the person is happy. Now, when a person is depressed, it's black all the time. Mm. Even when good news comes, they're not happy. Mm. It doesn't cheer them up. They don't, they don't even feel interested. Mm. They don't even really react. It's as if they don't even have the energy to be happy. Then you know that there's depression. It's different from, oh, you know, the ups and downs mm. that we all feel regarding our mood, you know, from time to time, you know, in the course of the day. No. Okay. That's why we say these symptoms should have been there for minimum mm. of two weeks, two weeks to a month. Okay. During which that person just remains persistently unhappy or irritable, you know, no energy, no interest in things. Ah, we're thinking depression. Well, um, you say, uh, of course, it's an illness, even though some people don't really understand the fact that it is an illness. Now, you mentioned some of the symptoms. At what point 
do these symptoms begin to you know translate to suicidal tendencies ah uh, that is um something that happens when depression has become severe mm -hmm. and that is why we have to take depression seriously as an illness we we cannot afford to leave depression untreated because if we leave depression untreated the end point could be suicide mm. so we need to um, pay attention when people are telling us they're not feeling happy we shouldn't just say oh get up and be happy i always use this example if a person was injured for example and was lying down with their their the bones of their legs broken will we come to their bedside and say what is all this now they just said you had a small fall get up and let's go and jog you, you're not going to say that because you can see oh this person is injured there's pop there now in the case of depression the brain is injured literally and you know what i'm trying to say but because of course we cannot see their broken brain we cannot see the the, the chemical derangement in the mm. brain which is not allowing their brain to pass messages as it should we just say oh get up what is all this mm. or there's nothing called depression that is why again sometimes people go <coughs> recommend me. drinking oh just let's go for a few drinks in fact quite often when people become depressed they, they try to self-medicate by drinking they start mm. to drink thinking that you know um, maybe if they drink their, their mood is going to okay. improve some younger people they start to take cannabis hmm. they start to look for drugs to i, I, I know you are an addiction you know specialist we'll get to that uh, when you know addiction you know comes in in all of this but um, there's another you know angle to this is it to do with positive thinking you know there are people who say if you are positive in your thought it you know takes tends to take you away from depression and then there are some people who have this habit of you know talking down on some people you know uh, condescending cond you know in in the manner of uh, you know their speech now talk to me about that and how it relates to one's state of mind okay um quite often there are there are um, f what we call predisposing factors, things that could make a person more prone to developing depression than others. So anybody, and let me say this here, anybody could become depressed. Mm -hmm. they, uh, it has no stress, gender, religion. Yeah, regardless of gender, uh, religion, race. age, or race, yeah. or economic status in life, anybody could become depressed mm. and there are factors that could tip a person in the direction of being likely to be depressed the first factor is genes a person is more likely to be depressed if the person has a family member who has been depressed in the past mm -hmm. the other factor also has to do with how the person the kind of life the person lives so if, for example, a, a person who, you know, you, you compare two men, one wakes up in the morning, the wife gives him a very good tongue lashing, then he goes to the office, the boss gives him a tongue lashing, mm -hmm. then in the evening he goes to meet the boys, he doesn't have a pen in his pocket to even uh, uh, maybe buy a round of drinks. That kind of person begins to lose self-esteem. Mm. and could become more prone to depression than somebody else who who might have been prone to depression. Maybe has the genes for depression, mm. but has a supportive wife, has a, an understanding yeah. uh, boss. You understand? So Nkomi, you say gene for uh, depression? Is that yes. what you just said? Yes. The okay. greatest factor that would determine whether a person would become depressed or not mm -hmm. is their genes okay it's a familial thing a, a person who has and that's the same thing with most mental illnesses a okay. person who has a family member who has suffered depression okay. is more likely to suffer depression okay so it's important when a person so are you saying it's hereditary, uh, hereditary? absolutely it's okay. hereditary it's hereditary all right so it's very important when a person knows uh, 
he or she has depressed family members, the person has to look after their mental health, you know, mm. get away from, from stress as much as possible. It's the same way that if a person um, knows that they have relatives with diabetes, they should or already start avoiding taking sugar, getting mm. obese and things like that. Mm. It, because they know that if they get obese like people who don't have relations who have diabetes, they are likely to have diabetes. So it's the same thing. Mental health conditions can be preventable if a person at least tries to you know inoculate themselves from from mm. stress you know dr oluanuga a lot of people are keen you know on this discussion i just like you say it's good that people are talking about depression now this person is saying that uh, good morning house hmm you can imagine a matured person with family and cannot afford even what we eat this one is coming from aliu azizu from makudi you know this boils down to the issue of uh, the economy the condition of life you know some people lose their job and all of that how much impact does all this you know societal challenge most especially the economic challenge you know you know have on the one's mental health there are sources of stress to the mental health. And yes, they could push people into mental illness. You know? So societal stress is important. And this is where issues like suicide come in. It isn't everybody who attempts or commits suicide that is depressed. Depression is one of the major causes of suicide. But it's not the only cause. Sometimes people commit suicide on impulse. Maybe something just happened. They just believe, oh, they've had it. And they just, and they, they have ample opportunity. Something they can use is around, hmm. you know. That's why people were talking about banning certain chemicals in households yeah. at a time. Because people would just go, something happened, they just go and grab a bottle of something poisonous, you know? So we need to realize that stress in the society, yes, it can be a contributory factor. And that is why homes, homes and families, friends, society should be a, you know, a place where people can come to. I, imagine the difference between somebody who goes to work, faces a lot of stress, but when he gets home, he cannot even talk about it. There's no listening ear. And I also know that one aspect, uh, you know, a lot of people have complained about it, is the media and the glow, uh, glamorization of wealth and all of that. But we talk about this after we must have taken this report put together by Magdalene. All over the world, including Nigeria, Depression cuts across all ages, which adversely affects the way an individual think, act, or feels. According to statistics from the World Health Organization, WHO, it is estimated that about 50 million Nigerians are at risk of having mental illness. Everyone makes it look like um, it's only the rich sibling that people respect. It's only when you're rich that um, people will listen to you or that you have influence on people. People portray the, um, or even make jest of someone who is poor or who is hungry, you know, people disrespect them, you know. And I think maybe the storylines have to change a bit for people to know that your worth is not determined by your financial status. While it has been observed that high poverty rates, financial difficulties, and social adversity are also contributory factors, viewers easily fall prey to the make-believe they see on the television in an attempt to make ends meet through any means. Use of drugs, alcohol has been glamorized. The so-called social figures, the so-called role models, the so-called um, celebrities, they glamorize these things. And those are the people that the young people idolize. So look at things from dressing. 
you know, from the way they dress, from the, to the way they walk, to so you sometimes you look at it and you say asking yourself why are you behaving this way oh you're old school because this is what is in vogue now and you're wondering how did we get here yeah so the media actually you know has its positive and its negative impacts but with our mental health we need to be mindful of what we take in to some persons depression might look like a minor health condition experts disclose that if not properly managed may lead to serious disorders cuts across ages depression depression can happen for even from as young as eight years old we've, been, we've seen patients that will tell you that the last time they felt happy was maybe when they were six years old they probably had suicidal thoughts from as a young as from as early as eight years old some of them will tell you that they have even attempted from back then depending on what their circumstances are so to manage first of all you know the first line of treatment of course, is to do the assessment, find out what factors are contributing to that person's, you know, depression. So let's assume that this particular person is maybe low self-esteem, maybe the person feels like they're a failure, and they'll almost always tell you, depending on your skills in, be in being able to get the information, they'll tell you, oh, I feel stuck. You know, um, all my peers have moved ahead. I see them on social media. They've gone way past. They're doing very well. I just feel like I'm a failure. Undoubtedly, life can bring sad events that can make one downcast. However, if one is feeling sad or helpless and hopeless on a regular basis, you are probably dealing with depression. Consult a medical practitioner immediately for life has no duplicates. Life certainly has no duplicate. And uh, we still have uh, our, you know, guest here with us in the studio. Now, let's look at social media now, because a lot of people will tell you that, uh, you know, a lot of people live fake lives on social media. And if you go to mainstream media, you see how you know, movies portray people who have, you know, affluence, you know, in the society and how to get rich quick and all of that. And then you are sitting and like, God, why? When will my time come? You know, and all of that. How does all this, you know, play in, you know, have impact or impact our psychological, you know, well-being? Well, I think that um, society has a way sometimes of giving people the wrong values mm -hmm. and people begin to compare their lives to that of other people what i tell people i ask can you think of three things that happened to you today for you to be thankful for at the end of the day can you think of three things you should be thankful for can you think of at least one new thing you learned today at least one new thing you learned today and can you think of at least something good you did for someone else mm. today see because quite often we let uh, and this is a real concern now for young people this idea of social media i i have seen it before where young people go and stand near very glamorous cars mm. posing selfie in car parks you know and i'm sure they'll post them and their friends will think, oh my goodness, this person is having a good life and I'm here. Hmm. We need to let our young people know that the value of a person is actually determined by how much good that person can do for hmm. others. Were you kind to someone today? Did you help a little child today? Hmm. Did you help an elderly person today? Were you able to give your friend good advice today? Then you are not worthless. Hmm. It doesn't matter whether um, some people are telling you during the summer they went to three different countries mm. and you did not leave your village. You can be in your village impacting lives. Mm. Did you spend your, your vacation, your university undergrad, did you, did you teach some children around you maths or English or science or whatever you are studying? Mm. Okay, we, we have some messages here. Let's start with this one that says... Uh, my name is uh, Chukwere. 
uh, Chibweke Max. So the situation we found ourselves in Nigeria today, believe me, 80% of Nigerians are depressed. For example, as a federal government worker, you are, um, you know, collecting around 57,000 Naira as your monthly salary. You have your rent to pay, transport, to, you know, to work your workplace from Maraba or to central area in Abuja. In, Niger in Nigeria's present economic, you know, <laughs> reality, sir, you don't need a doctor or prophet to tell you that that man is depressed. As things are increasing in the market, let people increase, let government increase, you know, people's salary, depression, set depression certainly will stop. That is his opinion. The next one says, my name is uh, Mohammed. I have fracture on my leg. Uh, my 100,000 house rent is due in January and I have uh, a loan of 100,000 left for me to service with a bank with a bank and finally my wife is pregnant how to feed this month is a big deal while my parents are poor I am in serious depression you heard what people are saying. You know, it's it's very easy that economy reality is a major source of depression in Nigeria today. Yes, the economy is a major source of frustration and is a major source of unhappiness. And those factors drive depression. Yes, so because of the economic situation, more people are getting depressed but if we say economic situation what about a doctor who is fully employed gainfully employed he has cars you know he has house he doesn't pay house rent he owns his own house and all of that is fine and then just go straight to the third mainland bridge and just park his car and just dump jump committing suicide yes that was why we established at the beginning that depression across all sexes, ages, and uh, socioeconomic or professional uh, 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 cadres. Therefore, there's nothing that stops a doctor from being depressed. And if a doctor is depressed, in fact, quite often it's very sad, I have to tell you this, the last people who will seek help, quite often when they are ill, are doctors. It okay. isn't only for mental health conditions. It's for all sorts of even physical health conditions. Okay. They may be self-medicating or sometimes they may in fact be so busy they go to the hospital every day but immediately they get to the hospital they enter their clinic, they are attending to patients. By the time they, they are done with their patients, their colleagues that they could have seen are also done with their patients and they've left. Okay, now doctor, another issue is can this depression that probably leads to you know suicidal tendency be sent from the village <laughs> no. because you know you know as sometimes like oh well, my, okay, my, my, let my, let my village people you. are at work the, you know some diabolical people can cause depression village people can cause depression because of the kind of messages they send if I mean in a somebody, diabolical Manner. No, that diabolical manner yeah. is not in science. I'm a scientist. I'm a, I'm a medical practitioner. Okay. I do not delve in the areas of metaphysics or, okay. or diabolical. But I know that if you're village people who don't know that you earn 57,000 naira and mm -hmm. you have rent and so on, and they are still sending, ah, that is the only son we have in Abuja. Mm. Your mother needs this, so your brother needs this, so your sister's husband, and the man is there. He is not even coping. Hmm. He begins to feel like he's a failure. See, I can hardly feed my family here, and I don't even have any leftover. I used to be able to send something home in the village. Now but I can't. Now, could be now I, time is, you know, uh, going, uh, really not our friend now, but uh, talk to me quickly. There are people who believe that with self-love, depression will be checked. Yes, partially. Partially. Okay. Let me say this. Depression is an illness. Mm -hmm. The fact is this. Quite often, it does happen. Regardless of what we do, a person could become depressed. Having said that, 
we still should try. At what point do I you know, need a professional to actually diagnose someone for, you know, at what point should you seek for help really? Okay, you need to seek for help. If you're feeling low, like we've discussed before, mm -hmm. you are feeling unproductive, lacking in energy, it's gone on and it's beginning to affect your daily life. It's mm -hmm. beginning to affect your relationships. You, 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 you can no longer, most of the time, crying all the time or feeling like crying, can no longer work, mm. can no longer do household, play household roles, then the person needs to seek help. Well, you've heard it all from uh, Dr. Ephraim Luanuga, the Chief Consultant Psychiatrist of uh, Na uh, National Hospital Abuja. It's very important. Family support is very important. The need to seek for help is very important. Self-love is also very important. Uh, some tips uh, there on how to deal with uh, depression. But first, we must know that depression is real. It's an illness that can't be treated. Right now, let's go on a break. And after that, we continue our conversation in the studio. Thank you for staying with us. And uh, I must say that a lot of people are sharing their experiences with us. And uh, just to confirm that this definitely is a serious uh, issue in the society today. This one says, uh, my name is Joyce. I think I inherited depression from my mother growing up. Uh, we see her behavior. We see her do things that uh, we are not normal, but they just realize that now. And, um, you know, uh, they find it difficult to, uh, I mean, socialize with people. And, um, yeah, of course, she also went on to say she needs um, help. And socializing with colleagues is becoming very difficult as I get irritated easily. And, of course, you want the number of the doctor that we just uh, interviewed. Of course, uh, she is in the National Hospital. Just go to the Department of uh, Psychiatry. You, I'm sure you will get the help that you need. And if you're not in Abuja, walk into any National Hospital, certainly you will get the help you need. And of course, uh, let's take this next report to together by Uju. And she's talking about the rising cases of uh, suicide in Nigeria. Deep thoughts, worry, combination of pain and confusion beclouded my mind. End it already. What's the use of life? It's all over. These were all that reeled through my mind as I lay in the dark lost. So, is this depression taking over me? Or am I just being childish and weak? Wake up, pick up your pieces. Hey, look at baby. I never knew I was not alone in this sinking boat of depression. Depression is a chemical reaction of the body that responds to a negative experience or a negative event of life. Depression is that state where your mind feels offended, feels depreciated, where you feel that you are unhappy, and you're losing hope. So depression is directly proportional to loss of hope, really. That's the way it works. And it's a thought pattern that has brought people to that point. And it can vary from mild to severe or acute depression. So that's the way it works. At the point I was going through all that I was going through, I didn't have a name for it. I didn't know that was depression. It was when I started reading it up and all the symptoms, the, the withdrawal, the, the lack of zeal for life, the apathy for everything, not you're touchy, you're grouchy, you're annoyed every time, you're, you're just, your head is in all places. It was when I read it up and I found out that, oh, actually, what was worrying me that time was depression. I used to be very upset. And I used to look at heaven and I ask God, why am I still here? Sometimes it got so much, I thought... I used to, th I, 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 I looked forward to just dying, you know, and then I played with the idea of, of um, suicide, you know, like rat poison. I had rat poison at home for rodents, you know, and all that. And sometimes I used to look at the container. I wonder what will happen if I take it. 
Society has advanced into a century that has chosen the path of natural isolation, adversity of different kinds befalling. Suicide is the order of the day. Mental pressure taking a toll on the society too. One wonders, is there an end to depression? Or is suicide the solution? When we hear people take their lives, ah, they, that suicide is not an option. Who said? Suicide is an option. They are wondering, actually, I'm stressing people. Let me just end this thing. Let me just go. And then they now leave the world with a lot of misery. So they think that they, they are doing well, cutting the pain, cutting short the trauma, not knowing that they are opening a new level of trauma for those that they leave behind. What will happen to your children? Now, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to cast aspersions on those who have jumped into the see or kill themselves one way or the other but i also think that they should think and ask themselves is there more to live for in this present situation in another one two three four five years will i still be in this situation what is there that will make me stay you get for me apart from my children i know that i have a purpose and if I left that time I won't I won't fulfill that purpose a quick reflection on yesteryears what is it that we are doing wrongly if I had my way if I had the powers I'd like to take us back to our communal days where young people in fact everyone we come together for shared values, for the purpose of happiness, bonding, you know, connect. Then we didn't have, we had landlines, we didn't have smartphones, we didn't have smart internet, we didn't have, if our laptops then was a luxury. It looked like if you had a laptop, you are really a big man. So it was desktop and it looked like there were time for everything. There was time for food, time for game, time for community. Time to, so everything had its time, not now that we are all on our mobile phones. The church, the family, the, in Islam, in any religious circle, government, they have a big role to play in, in supporting, in creating some sort of support system. Because I would recommend that family members should take up personal development programs on how, on how to identify someone who is going through depression or any kind of thing. For example, young, yeah, ad, a, teenagers and young adults who are addicted to drugs. If you don't know the symptoms, you might just think it's spiritual issues. Meanwhile, it's not, it's just drugs. So we need to study these things and know, so that when they present, we can say that, yes, this person is depressed, or yes, this person is doing drugs, or yes, this is this, or this is that. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? Can depression be a sponge from our society? A problem shared. A friend ever told me, is a problem half solved. Speak out, reach out, open up. Help is just a mention away. Thank you uh, for that report. And uh, of course, uh, uh, it's good always to speak out, to share your problem. But it's also very important to know the kind of people to share your stories with uh, because uh, sometimes uh, you think you're going for s to someone to help you but at the end of the day they will compound your challenge or problem as you have it we have uh, some messages here this one says depression is a disaster of the day due to the cost of the high cost of living about 90 percent are not salary earners so the issue of salary increase is not the solution rather the solution should be about reducing poverty in nigeria if that is done depression will go the next one says daniel monday chochi from uh, Jos. i advise that groups associations uh you know society uh, uh, you know ngos be formed to help people with uh, depression of course uh it's very important as well now let's welcome our next guest in the studio uh he's uh, prince kevin fine face a life coach and also a business coach you're welcome to our My studios pleasure. okay good morning yeah with your trademark uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah well. anyways uh, uh kevin 
there are, as a life coach, I'm sure you must have, you know, engage people on the need to have positive mindset and all of that but some people have also you know concluded that once you have that positive mindset the power of positive thinking you are helping yourself to build that massive wall against uh, uh depression well uh, true to some extent um you know there's always that coping mechanism that we must always get to help ourselves in the case of, he said, as a life coach, I've been, um, you know, um, should I say, um, a victim before. Really? Yeah. In the course of my life, I've been depressed, even to the point of being suicidal. Wow. Yeah. You have this suicidal thought that comes into your head that I think it's best to end it mm -hmm. so that the person or the thing, situation that is causing you to get to that state of mind can let you be. But that is actually a lie. Hmm. Because when you end up taking your life, if you can see yourself after death, you realize that you'll be more depressed. Hmm. Uh, because a sense of a feeling of loss hmm. to getting an expectation or to being something is only oftentimes a cause of depression, either economical, emotional, spiritual, or physical. Uh, which means the lifestyle you have, the kind of food you eat can actually cause you to be depressed. Hmm. Uh, the people you have relationship with can cause you to be depressed. Hmm. Uh, someone that just said the cost of living is yeah. high, failure of government doing the right thing can cause some form of depression. And that's why even governments in nation also do have depression and recession. Hmm. You know, uh, so uh, having positive mindset can help to some extent, but Having a positive mindset without corresponding results can further increase your level of depression. Hope deferred makes the body sick or the mm. bone sick. So when you're having a positive mindset, you speak, I am blessed, I am well, then the situation that confronts you still remains. Mm. It's like someone who takes alcohol to want to clear off his head. After the alcohol is gone, what happens? The problem comes back. Or he goes to church, he's prayed for. Mm. Or he sees the mom is prayed for, and after all the prayers and the situation still remains, what happens? So we must find ways with which people can retrace their steps. It's like the maze game. Mm. In the maze game, it's like a difficult place to come out from. But if you take your time, you'll be able to find your way out and get out of that situation. It's your ability to walk through the processes. Okay. Being conscious of the fact, accepting the fact that you are in this situation. Mm. But understanding why you're in the situation is the biggest place to find help. To now, now uh, Kevin, obviously, I don't want to know what caused your depression, but I'm more interested in knowing what you did to get out of it because it will go a long way in helping some people who are presently, you know, experiencing depression. Okay. Yeah, as you say, you, say you don't want to know what caused So if you don't know why, how do you not get to know that? I'm app? saying now, that know, because it yeah. might be a personal thing, man. Now, I don't want to. Pass, even yeah. if it's personal, we should always encourage people to learn to speak and to speak comfortably, okay. well, and honestly so. All right. Because in speaking, it helps people to have that hindsight opportunity to know the why and understand how to get out of it. Okay. My depression stem, I think, um, uh, let me say this. Depression could also be... Uh, um, Genetical. Yeah, the doctor earlier confirmed that. Yeah, as it well. could be. It could be. Yeah, yeah it's generational. Um, when I was young, I'd written a suicide note to my elder sister, telling her that life wasn't worth living because I wasn't getting the kind of love I expected from my mom hmm. and my dad as at that time. So I assumed that there was no need leaving. Quite young, as a hmm. teenager, when I became an adult, that got married. Um, at some stage of my marital life, hmm. I started finding myself losing the sense for living. Hmm. And like deals of getting depressed. Uh, why was I getting depressed? Because I wasn't getting uh, certain expectations, you know, from my partner. And so it was like, I think the best thing that could happen is that I think I need to end it, right? So I I'll be driving on the street of Abuja, and guess what? Once I get to a high elevation, maybe the bridge, a flyover, the next thought that comes to mind is that just drive off the bridge and end your life, you know? And I started thinking, like, well, this is not a good thought. So I started looking for a positive distraction. Oh, I have kids, and these kids have no reason to suffer from my own 
you know, situation. Mm. So I started looking forward to seeing that those kids could be a reason for leaving, even mm. if I wasn't getting what I was expecting from my partner. Mm. I started finding ways to reconnect to my God through my faith, mm -hmm. to understand, okay, he loves me so much, there was yeah. no need for me to do those things. I started finding friends that I could communicate with, relate mm. with. I started, uh, you know, exercising. I started looking for ways to eat good food. I started finding information that could help me go out of that situation. And all of those things truly did help. Mm. Because here's the thing. When it comes to emotional depression, it is a sense of a feeling of not being one appreciated, mm. to not receiving what you expect to receive mm -hmm. from your partner, three, overly expecting that this other individual should be super big to understand you mm. so as to relate better with you. Uh, four, is that uh, we tend to sometimes not know who we are, and mm. so we oftentimes have conflicts with who we relate with. Now, Kevin, today you are a parent, and of obviously there are things a wonderful that... wonderful you know, <laughs> parent. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. <laughs> now, sometimes parents force their words to, you know, do things that ordinarily they don't want to do. Now, let's take example for, I mean, uh, with marriage. You know, I had a classmate, a female classmate, who was forced to marry somebody she never liked, somebody she never loved. So I paid her a visit one of these days just to say hello to her because we were communicating. I never knew anything about depression. I don't know anything about suicidal tendency, but I just knew she was not happy. So I paid a visit to the house and there was nobody there, but something kept pushing me to just go in because the door, the door was left agile. So when I entered, it's like a compound. I, I called out. I do it all things I was supposed just to do just to, to sure attract uh, attention. attention. Nobody responded. And suddenly I saw a hand like almost lifeless. I thought maybe the person was sleeping. So I approached. Getting there, I saw the, you know, this white forms oh, like coming wow. out from her mouth. And then with a suicidal note by her side, I started shouting. That saved her life. Wow. God bless so, you. <laughs> amen. Now, talk to me about parents forcing their words, you know, the effect of parents, you know, making their words, doing things that ordinarily they don't want to do. Here's the thing, you know, parents, uh, some parents, some of us parents tend to be selfish. We tend to want to see our kids be who we are not, who we, who we wanted to be that we couldn't. And so we force our kids to study causes that they, they don't want to study. Uh, we also tend to force our kids to get to marry people we believe will give us that societal, you know, yeah. estimation. So there's a class status syndrome that affects us as parents in some cases. And that's why I want to encourage every individual, go find out who you truly are. It is important you do your personality clarity test. This will help you to understand your biological mix your spiritual connotations and how to be able to relate to people that you need to relate with. Mm. Because failing to know who you are will oftentimes make you get into conflict, even in how you raise your kids. One of the first things, you know, I did also was, uh, you know, after when I got to this stage, I had to see a psychiatrist. I had to see um, I mean, a psychologist. I had to see, you know, um, a marriage counselor. I had to see a personality clarity coach. Hmm. Four different people in finding solution. It was in that process where oh, I realized that part of what I was conflicting myself with in terms of my relationship was actually a biological mix. Hmm. At some stage, it was like it was a spiritual thing. It wasn't a spiritual thing. It was the individual personality that is conflicting with my personality. Hmm. And so there was no place for compromise because of the personality types. Hmm. And for kids, my dad wanted me to go do business because he has different businesses. Mm. So he pulled me out from a science class into, you know, the, the arts class. And that altered my learning ability. Okay. And so for a parent who is forcing their kids to get to marry, mm. it's wrong to force. Rather, I think what parents should begin to learn to do mm. is to communicate, mm. effectively communicate your desire. Okay. This is why I wanted to get married to this person. This is how this is going to be. Because see... We need to tell ourselves this truth. No child or mm. no individual get to love someone f just like that. Mm. Love is a progressive thing. Yeah. Emotional considerations and passional feelings can be automatic. Okay, but love in is a one sentence, thing. what is a key thing people should know about depression and how to avoid it? Simple. Yeah. Once you start finding someone being withdrawn, you know, withdrawn from the normal, uh, you don't. You want to begin to engage that individual. Let's as much as possible 
be empathetic mm. to people, how we, how we relate. The key word is benevolence. If we understand what benevolence is, it means that we begin to see people from the way we want to feel them, how they want us to feel us, mm. and begin to relate in that order. But without that, if you just think, be a man. Mm. See, that's why I found this yeah, group. Yeah, man to man forum. Fun, Don't be that. a man anything. Don't yeah. say you're a woman, you have to do these things. It could result to things that because people get to that suicidal point when they begin to feel that what they do or what they need is not important they want to prove it mm. to cause harm to the other person but suicide never causes harm to another person you well, should have been at, at the major loss thank you very much for share, sharing your thought with us and My it's pleasure. quite enlightening and uh, we really appreciate we have been speaking with kevin fine face he's a life coach and also a business coach but of course uh, the show continues tomorrow and then our conversation will still focus on the rising uh, issue of mental uh, sorry mental health in nigeria elizabeth will be with you bright and early tomorrow for now bye <music>